Okay, so number three. Okay, so first let me so let me just get this up here. So exam three is tomorrow. And the only topic is structures. Um, and so practice problems on structures. Number three looks like this. So you have a fixed joint, and then this. Everything's pin joints except that fixed joint at the wall. And then there's a distributed load triangular and up at its highest point it has a value of 1500 newtons per meter. Uh, these are both 20 degrees. Um, this is 0.5 meters. There's a little bit of SAT math you have to do on this. Um, this distance is one meter. Okay. And there are no masses for anything. So the fact that there are no masses mean if you wanted to try to get tricky, you could you could simplify the way the loads are treated on three of these members. This one is a two-force member, this one is a two-force member, and this one is a two-force member. I'm not going to do it that way, and I don't really recommend you do that in this class, but that's something to kind of have in the back of your mind, I suppose. Um, so using the method of trusses uh, that comes up, you know, in static textbooks and stuff. You wouldn't be able to do this problem for, so there are two reasons you, you wouldn't be able to treat this as a truss. Uh, one is the distributed load here, and one is the fixed joint here. Um, other than those two things, it would be a truss, but that's, that's what makes it so that you can't treat this as a truss, but you can use the method we've been talking about. Um, so, what do we know about distances? Uh, there's one distance we would like to have. I guess there's a couple. Um, we like to know this height. So, how do you get this height? Yeah, right. Uh, so, that's going to be, well, I suppose... Uh, You can use the, okay, so, well, before you can do that, yeah, you could, you could use that. I, I don't do that. <laughs> it is, but I don't use that one. Um, so the way I think about it is break this up into a right triangle, um, and you can use the you know, this is 0.5, so you can use the inverse tangent to figure out the height. Um, and then once you have the height, so the tangent is, would be this height over 0.5. You know, tangent of 20 is equal to this height over 0.5, so what do you get for that height? 0 0.182 meters. And then what about this horizontal distance to here? 
That's 0.5 again, because this is an isosceles triangle. Because those angles are the same. And so this height then is 0.182. And now we should have enough geometry to do everything. Uh, so let me start by just doing all the free body diagrams <clears throat> and then think about what we can do from there. I, I don't think we want to go through the whole thing. But uh, the reason that, so really there's one reason only that three and four are on here. Um, so why, why is it important to do problems where there are more than two members that meet at at least one joint? That's because uh, keeping track of what member the pin is connected to becomes trickier when you have three or more members meeting at a joint. Okay? When you only have two members meeting at a joint, it's, it doesn't take as much thinking. Um, so free body diagram of the whole thing. Oh, yeah, let's do that. Oh, and you know what I want to do on this? Let's do it with two different sets of numbering and see how it works. And you'll see that the free body diagrams come out different and stuff, okay? So let me number it one way, and then we'll go back and do the free body diagrams again numbered another way, okay? So let's call that one, two, three. <laughs> Everyone looked at me funny when I said that, like, um, isn't that kind of a stupid thing to do? But I don't think so. Um, so free body diagram of the whole thing. Uh, yeah, so uh, you, can, you can list those or not. The way that now that all the pins are lumped in with members, those letters don't have to come up. You know, but we can do it that way. C, D, E. All right, so there's the free body. There is a downward force acting from the distributed load. And the magnitude of that, uh, this whole length is 1. The height of that triangle is 1,500. So 1,500 times 1 divided by 2. So yeah, 750. Um, and then over here, this is a fixed joint. So what loads are acting? Oh, for the centroid? Yeah. Yeah, so here's the reason. The force is vertical, and so the line of action is straight up and down. And so you don't care where along this vertical line of action you put this. You could put it, as long as you get the horizontal location right, you could make the y component 0. And so if I have a diagonal line, could I go anywhere along the diagonal? Yes, right. The line of action. That's right. Yep. But, and so. Uh, that really doesn't mess with the math at all. Nope. Uh, it, uh, it has to do with the cross product. Um, there's a place in the notes where I talk about that a little bit. You could go back and look at that. But um, it, uh, yeah, mathematically, it works out just the same way. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, yeah, let's call this, we could call this RE, or you could call it the force um, on member 5 by the wall. And then there's a couple, call that MR. Any other external things contacting the outside of this? 
Nope, so that's a complete free body diagram. And then let's go to member one. Um, so there's a couple things to think about here. So first of all, uh, it has two joints, A and B. This is the lowest numbered member in the whole thing. So, you know, the lowest numbered member always has both pins attached to it, and the highest number member never has any pins attached to it. Uh, so this, um, so at A, you have the pin. Uh, what's touching the pin? Yeah, so there's a force on one by two. And then at B, the pin is part of one. So what members are touching the pin at B? Three and five. Yep, so F, one, three, and F, one, five. Okay, so what about the um, what about the part of the distributed load that is over that joint? Yeah, that whole distributed load is on two. What about the um, but what about the part that so that distributed load gets all the way over to that point? What about the part that's directly over that pin? You know. Well, so I guess what I'm getting at here is, remember a distributed load doesn't apply any finite force without some amount of length, okay? So even though it looks like, so I think the thing that can be confusing about this is there's an arrow that's over the pin. What about, you know, what about the arrow? Like, isn't this arrow applied to this pin and don't we have to figure out how much force that arrow has of this total, it doesn't apply any because it doesn't have any length, you know. Um, so yes, that whole distributed load is going to be on two, yeah. Yeah, where the centroid is, exactly. All right, so now let's go to, any questions about either of these? OK, so now let's go to member two. It has two joints, A and C. Uh, does it, is the pin lumped in with two at A? No. no. Uh, is it lumped in with two at C? Yeah. Yes. So at A, all we have is the force on two by the pin. So that's the force, yeah. I'll write that as negative force one, two. Um, or maybe for now, I'm just, so I don't have to think about that, I'm gonna write it as, so the force on two by one. And then I would just switch it when we got to the equations. That's the way I'm used to doing it. Then I don't have to, while I'm worrying about the free body diagrams, I don't have to try to remember what variables I already have. Um, and then there's the distributed load. That's a total of 750 newtons. And then what forces are there at C? Yep, 2, 3, and 2, 4. Yep. And then member three, yeah, it's at the centroid of that shape, that triangular shape. You have to calculate the centroid of that, of this right triangle, the horizontal position of it. And then that whole force is applied. So the whole force is going to be a third of the way from this end toward the point. Yeah. Yep. Um.
So now we're on body three. That has two joints, B and C. Uh, is the pin attached to three at B? No. So what's touching three at B? Yeah, only the pin. So we have a force on three by one. And then up here at C, is the pin attached to three? No. So what do we have there? On three by two. Yep, and that's it. And now we're on four. Um, that has two joints. C, uh, is the pin attached to four at C? No. So what's the force at C? Yep. F, four, two. And then at D, the pin is attached to four. What forces are acting there? And then free body diagram of five. This has three joints. Is the pin connected to five at B? No. So what's the force at B? Yep. So F five one. And then at D, is the pin connected to five? No. So what's the force at D? F five four. That's right. And then we have the um, fixed joint here. We call this R E and this M R. So now you can look back and um, you don't, this isn't a step you have to do, but let's just look back for a second and figure out which one of these, which ones of these five members are two force bodies. Okay, so uh, member one, is that a two force body? Well, it looks like there are three forces, but remember that F13 and F15 are acting at the same point. So as far as body one is concerned, that's all just one force. Um, so. So yeah, this is a two-force body, which means you could, and I don't, you shouldn't do this right now, but you could, I mean, just for like understanding uh, how, how you could simplify this, you could treat this as like a force going that way and a force going that way. Um, and what about member three? Is that a two-force body? Three. Yeah, that one clearly is. Um, and so again, you could treat those that like it's intention. Um, that would cut down on the number of variables you have. What about four? That's a two-force body. This one obviously isn't a two-force body. Yep, that's right. Same magnitude, opposite directions along the line between the two joints. All it can be is pure tension and pure compression. Okay, yeah, that's a good question. So, um, because, of, because answers can be positive or negative, you can just assume one, and then negative just means it's the other one. So, so it doesn't matter. Um, people, no. I mean, when you've done a lot of these, in a, in a lot of cases, you can eyeball it, but you don't even have to do that. What most people do is... Uh, when you take mechanics of materials, you'll see tension is always assumed to be positive and compression is always assumed to be negative. So when people make this approximation, they just always assume it's in tension. Then if they get a negative value, it means it's in compression. Um, actually, we'll see 
that sign convention in internal loads too. So we'll see that like today or Monday. Um, and then uh, two force body also means that there's no couples. So it has to be two forces and nothing else. So even if this F54 wasn't there, this one wouldn't be a two force body because this couple would put it in something other than just pure tension and pure compression. All right, so now let's, uh, let's go through this again. Let's just renumber it, go through it again. Uh, why don't you, so let's number it together so we're all on the same page with that. And then you can all uh, individually work through it, compare answers to each other, and then we'll come back up here and make sure that you're thinking about it right. Okay, so this time let's go from sort of right to left. So let's call this member one, two, three, four, five. And let's call this A, B, C, D, E. Okay. 